This is a recorded announcement from Weeksville, North Carolina. The number you have dialed has been changed or disconnected. Please check your directory or call directory assistance. Thank you. This tape was recorded in March of 1977 in eastern North Carolina. This part of North Carolina is the area around Elizabeth City up in the northeast corner. The terrain is very flat, very sandy soil over there. And uh, typically when you drive down a road in that part of the North Carolina, at least in the 70s, you would always see these telephone poles that had many, many, many cross arms. And you'd see these wires, these pairs of wires Every couple of poles, the wires would switch places. The one on the left would go over to the right, and the one on the right would go over to the left. What that was was a system of sending telephone calls from one office to another. In those days, the digital carrier systems, the T1 and all that generation of carrier, hadn't completely taken hold yet, and the analog carrier systems were still in use. So uh, you can actually see these things driving down the roads, and that call that we just made has the classic sound of the open wire carrier. Roughly the way it works is they would take a number of channels, and I don't recall whether it was 12, somewhere in that range, and uh, each channel would be assigned its own radio frequency band to carry over these two pairs of wires. In this way they could put many conversations on the same wires. The problem here, though, is that when you uh, convert everything to radio frequencies and you put everything on the same wire, you lose the ability to send disconnect and answer signals by the normal direct current means of opening and closing the, uh, the electrical circuit. So you have to send the supervisory signals, that is the signal that says your called party has now answered and uh, the signal that says the person calling has just hung up. Those supervision signals have to be sent in another way. And uh, on this system, they did it by putting on a 3,700 hertz tone. Uh, and that tone would uh, go down the line uh, associated with each channel. And then the presence or the absence of the 3,700 cycle tone would indicate whether the channel was idle or in use. Or in the backward direction, it would indicate whether your called party had answered or not. So as I said, this type of carrier had a very distinctive sound. And here's another call again that goes over this open wire 3700 carrier. Notice how the carrier system sort of sings along with the voice of the directory systems operator. Directory assistance. Oh sorry, got you by mistake. Of course, not all phone calls sounded like that. This next call is to the same exchange as the first one you heard. It goes to the very same recording, but because it's on a 2600 cycle type carrier trunk, the call has a very, very different sound. Here it is, a call to the 330 exchange, and uh, you'll hear the same recording as you did before. a recorded announcement from Weeksville, North Carolina. The number you have dialed has been changed or disconnected. Please check your directory or call directory assistance. Thank you. Now compare the sound of that connection to the 3700 cycle carrier you heard before. This is a recorded announcement from Weeksville, North Carolina. The number you have dialed has been changed or disconnected. While we're on the subject of the difference between those two carrier systems, let's call a supervision test. This is a test number which effectively picks up and hangs up the phone over and over. It's like someone answering and hanging up and picking up and hanging up. It allows the phone men to test the answer supervision on trunks. Some of these test lines also make a a dial tone or a busy tone while they're flashing. It just depends on the office. But they all flash supervision. 
Because this call goes out on a 2600 hertz carrier trunk, you'll hear a loud burst of 2600 every time the circuit goes on hook, every time it hangs up, so to speak. The reason you hear a loud burst is that 2600 is within the uh, range of frequencies that is used for carrying voice. For that reason, there's actually a notch filter device that every time it detects that 2600 is coming back at you, this notch filter kicks in so that your ears don't get hurt. And so because of that filter coming in, you hear a burst of 26, and then the volume of the 2600 goes way down into the background. So here's a call to 232 in Sligo to the 232 soup test. Okay, now we'll contrast that with a call to a supervision test that goes over 3700 controlled carrier. On the 37 carrier, you don't hear the burst of tone on the onhook, and the reason for that is the uh, 3700 cycle tone is outside the normal band of talk frequencies, so it kind of naturally gets filtered out. Actually, it is slightly audible in the background, but you don't hear it very loudly. It's very subtle, and you never hear it as a loud burst as you do on that last call. So here's a call to the supervision test in the 264 office in Woodville. This call goes through a step-by-step -step tandem, and uh, I'm going to flash the hook switch, and that will reset the trunk. We'll then dial a two-digit code, which will go to reorder. Again, you could hear the uh, carrier circuit sort of ringing along with the sound of the reorder. That's a very common pattern for the 3700 uh, controlled carrier. This office we're calling from is 919482, Edenton, North Carolina. The switching equipment here is step by step. The whole calling area is step by step, in fact. But it doesn't sound like a step while dialing because of the director system, which I'll talk about later. Here's an intra office call. On this call, you can hear normal step noises, but not until the last few digits. We're calling 4823299. It's a supervision test, and the last few digits are going to sound like a normal step office.
That's a pretty unusual ring. Here's another call to a ringing number. And again, you can hear normal step noises on the last few digits. So let's talk about the director system. The 14 offices in this area cover a huge geographical region for everything to be local. And it doesn't make sense to have direct trunks to all 14 places. There has to be a tandem. Step by step by its very design doesn't work very well with local tandems. In fact, in most other places like this, you have to dial the digit 8 plus the 7 digit number for certain local calls which have to go through a tandem. That can be very confusing for customers, but here they've put in a director system, which among other things, lets everybody dial the normal seven-digit number. The director system acts like a surrogate dialer for the customer. The customer dials the normal seven-digit number, and then the director turns around and puts it through a tandem if it has to, usually just by dialing extra digits. For example, here, when we dial 453, which is one of the codes that has to go through a tandem, the director will first dial a 6 to reach the tandem, and then it'll dial a two-digit code, in this case 25, to get to the 453 office. And then from that point on, it's going to uh, repeat the same uh, last four digits that we dial. But uh, that's just an example of how the director acts as a storage and sending and translation device. Let's uh, call 453. I'll show you what I mean. Now we've just dialed 453 and nothing's happened yet. The director is waiting for us to dial the fourth digit. That's when it'll decide what to do. Now here's the fourth digit. Now you've heard some pulsing noises which indicate the director is taking certain actions. In this case, it was deciding what to do and then dialing 6 for the tandem, 2, 5, for this particular office via the tandem, and then it dialed the thousands digit we dialed, which was a 2. So we've dialed 4532, and it has dialed 6 plus 25 plus 2. And now let's dial two more digits. Now after each one of those digits, you heard it make some more pulsing noise, which corresponded to it just repeating the digit. As we dialed each digit, it repeated it. Now we'll dial the last digit, and you'll hear the director repeating it and then dropping out. On that call, the director's on the line for all seven digits, so we don't hear any of the normal step noises you would hear dialing from a normal step office. There is a way, however, to go behind the scenes and hear the step noises, and also to actually dial some of the cryptic codes which the director uses to route the call. Turns out that when you get a dial tone here, and you flash just the right amount of time, you can drop the director out of the circuit and end up sitting on the switching train. Now from there, you can dial 6 to get the tandem, just as the director does, and uh, try some of the other cryptic codes that it uses. So let's do that. Let's drop the director out and get onto the real switching train that is always operating behind the scenes, but that you don't usually hear. In order to do this, I'm going to do something really strange. It's very, very hard to get the right flash length here. So what I'm going to do to make sure I get it is I'm going to pick up the phone and dial 111. That's just to get the director into a holding pattern. From there, I'm going to start flashing my hook several times, and I'm finally going to get the right length. And when I get the right length flash, the director will be gone. Now, this is going to sound a little weird, but this is just a sloppy but effective way 
to drop the director out without dialing anything. Okay, here goes. There. It took a few tries to get it. The director is now off the line. We are now sitting on the first selector. This is where the dial tone would be if this were a normal step. But in this office, the dial tone is actually coming from a part of the director known as the register sender. So here we are sitting on the switching train. Nothing has been dialed. It's really quiet. There's not that usual buzz on the line that the director puts on. And let's try dialing a 6, the uh, code the director uses to get the tandem. Uh-huh. We got the cut-in noise, and here's the trunk to the tandem. This time we've gotten a 3700 hertz controlled trunk. And let's now dial 25, which is the code for the 453 office we called before. Let's see how that sounds. Ah, two nice step cut-in noises there. You don't always hear that, but on this call you do. And uh, you can hear now that the trunk noise has a different quality. We've actually gone through to the 453 office. Uh, and that's how it works. Six to get the tandem, and then two five to get through to the 453 office. And what do you know, here we are on the trunk. So now we'll dial the last four digits, and it will ring. Okay, let's make a couple of calls to the 491 prefix, which is in a town called Mamie. First, we'll actually dial normally 491-2299. On this call, the director drops out early and lets us dial the last two digits directly onto the trunk. Okay, now let's dial it more directly. We'll get a dial tone and flash a couple of times. Eventually, we'll drop the director off, leaving us on the switching train. Then we'll dial 6 for tandem, 2-1 to reach the Mamie office, and then the last three digits of a non-working number, 413. Announcement from Mamie, North Carolina. The number you have dialed has been changed or disconnected. Please check your directory or call directory assistance. Thank you. 919 491.
obviously there was a lot of crosstalk on that connection. And uh, that particular office accepts three digits on certain thousand groups and four digits on other thousand groups. As a result, every director in this entire local calling area has to know that if somebody dials a 491-2000 number, only the last three digits are to be sent, but if they dial, say, a 491-8000 number, four digits are to be sent. They really don't like digit-absorbing selectors in this area. It's amazing how they really are uh, using those directors for little things like that. One more quick call to 491. I like this one because the trunk noise is interesting. We will drop the director, and then we'll dial 6 for tandem, 2-1 to reach 491, and then 1 will go to a reorder. But listen carefully to the background trunk noise. You can hear uh, first the initial tandem trunk noise. It's 2600 in the background. And then when we dial 2-1, the trunk noise increases. And then we'll dial 1 and get a reorder. Just to show you how much the type of carrier affects the sound of a connection, here's another call to that same reorder, but this time through a different uh, combination of trunks. The director system is actually a collection of several things. I don't want to get too technical, but basically it starts with an access relay circuit, which is what allows it to insert itself between the customer and the uh, switching train. There's actually one access relay circuit between every line finder and its first selector. And that's how the director gets in there. The access relay circuit leads to an appearance on a group of link finders. The link finder is a concentration device similar to a line finder but its job is to get a register sender to the customer and the register sender is what gives dial tone so the process of getting a dial tone involves first having the line finder find you and once that happens then the link finder has to find your line finder to give you a dial tone so it's actually a two-stage process and in this office you can hear the two stages notice that as we pick up the phone there's a buzz that comes on the line halfway between picking up and getting the dial tone. Listen carefully. It's pick up buzz dial tone. This director system, no matter where you find it in the US, makes that buzz. I think it's the AE system. And sure enough, as soon as the line finder puts you through to the link which goes to that director, there's the buzz. You can hear it before you even get a dial tone. It's amazing. Anyway, there's another component to the director system called a translator, which is the device that tells the register senders what to do. There's one translator for every hundred register senders.